And the 60 is from here to here. Seriously, I'm in one pants leg. That's a 60. It's so great to just lose the weight and be healthy, you know, so I, I, I'm very appreciative. Now, I'm also very appreciative that now when I get on the city buses, I only take up two seats, not three. <laughs> I'm very proud of that. One lady got on the bus with a shopping cart, and automatically she thought I was supposed to give up my two seats that I really worked hard to get. You know what I'm saying? I said, no, miss, you can have one seat. But I'm not going to give you both seats. No, no, not at all. And she said something very insulting and disrespectful to me. It, it really hurt me. She said, screw you, you inconsiderate Sinbad. <laughs> I said, I'm not an inconsiderate Sinbad. I'm a young Sinbad. <laughs> like young Sheldon. Get it straight. Um, on the buses, they have. Um, billboards or, or campaign slogans um, for Biden. They used to, but when it was on there, it was just rambling words. You couldn't really understand what I'm saying. You couldn't understand what I'm saying. Just, just all chopped up. A grammar teacher would have a fit looking at it. It was like, let me, let me see if I remember what it says. It says, I shoot a par four on the eight, eight handicap. I still got it. Medicare rules. Border Patrol lose. Uh, thank you. What did that mean? You know, his son is mad at him. Yeah, Hunter Biden? He said he was supposed to pass the buck to him. He says he's supposed to tag him in to run, not Kamala. He said, because he has an advantage. Because he's a felon too, so him and Trump are both felons, so, you know, he's gonna win anyway. He said, Trump robs women, I rob crack dealers. I'm going both sides, I don't give a joke with y'all. So, so one side of the room is like, another side of the room, ha, ha. I don't know what side you're on, so I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm playing both sides. I'm playing both sides. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's, a, he's a convicted felon, Hunter Biden. His girlfriend threw him under the bus during the court trial. Did, did y'all read that? Did you see that? A deposition? Terrible. What kind of girlfriend is that? A oh, side chick, what was she was? Yes. You sound like you would just give him an earful when he came home. Right? And, he did, and she said this in the deposition when he came home to her house. She was like, um, Hunter, he's like, yeah, baby. She was like, um, is, did you leave your crack pipe on my dining room table? He just stood there. I guess. What would you say he said that to you? Maybe. <laughs> That's a good answer. Uh, I was going to do it. We're an older crowd. I was going to go to something else, but I'm not going to do it later. <laughs> that answer would be good for if a woman asked a man a question while you're in bed. So we'll, we'll save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> then she said he would purposely buy an old 1989 Chevy Caprice to drive around downtown D.C. and Delaware to rob crack dealers with an unloaded 45. They run up to the window, he has his window down, he has the gun resting on the windowsill. When they walk up, they shock, he says, I, I'm gonna buy you. Give me what you got. Run your pockets. And don't go to the police, because they ain't gonna believe you. The president's son just robbed you. <laughs> he got away with murder. He'll make a great president. It's going to be him and Donald Trump Jr. 2034. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Matter of fact, Donald Trump called um, Joe Biden and says, thank you. Joe Biden said, well, thank you for dropping out because I beat women. <laughs> That's such a poor choice of words. I'm sorry. I had to say that one. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Kamala is going to have a good time. Hillary, not so much, but let's go on. 
Oh, your shoe is done. You ever seen her dance? Oh, she can dance. Yeah, yeah. We gonna have a good time here, you two. Yeah. Uh, I used to be that way. I used to be a big big man, but now I'm glad I'm slim. But now, even though I'm slim now, it still doesn't matter because I'm still a big big guy. So it doesn't matter, you know, what door I stand next to. People come up to me randomly and hand me their IDs for no reason at all. <laughs> no matter what door I'm standing next to. No matter what I got on, especially black. One guy walked up to me and gave me his ID. I was like, what is this, sir? What is this? He says, it's my ID. Aren't you the bouncer? I'm like, no, sir. This is a Starbucks. Walk in. <laughs> Starbucks don't have no bouncers. He said, can I have my ID back? I'm like, no. Don't get your ID to strangers. Now I know where you live. That was true. <laughs> so um, I'm from New York, but I try not to go downtown to 42nd Street where the tourists have I have something really, really important to do. Because tourists always like to run up to me and ask me for directions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you know, I'm an approachable person, looking person. I wouldn't approach me. So, two Germans walked up to me, here on 42nd Street, right there on 42nd Street. And they, I, I presume they were gonna ask me for directions, but they said something totally off the wall. They was like, excuse me, um, we love the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Are you Uncle Phil? <laughs> I'm like, what? Do I look out on some other way? I, I don't, I don't have a beard. I mean, I mean, a, a real bushy beard like him. Are, are you, are you crazy in Germany? They're like, oh, we're sorry, but we know you're out to character, but we still recognize you. <laughs> we know you're out to makeup, but we still love you. I said, you know what? You two, you two stand right here because I'm about to get the real Will Smith to slap both of y'all. <laughs> y'all stand right here. Give me that nonsense. <laughs> Tell that to David Hasselhoff. It's a German name, I just picked him on the head. <laughs> so I leave them, I distance myself from them, and I'm walking to where I gotta go. I'm saying, I gotta get out of 42nd Street. And then three seconds later, somebody says, hey, yo, Papi! Yo, Papi! I'm like, what? Yo, Papi, Fat Joe, you lost weight. Can I get an autograph? They're under four, I mean, you're over 45, so y'all don't know who the hell that is. So, I, I, I hope y'all know that. So that. That joke went over your heads. I, it's okay, it's okay. Let's, let's work it out. I said, I'm not Fat Joe. And he says, you're not gonna give me an autograph? And I was like, no, I'm not Fat Joe. part you don't understand, I'm not Fat Joe. He says, yo, sing me a song. I'm like, oh man, get out of my face. Now we're face to face, now we're breathing on each other. <laughs> then we looked down, oh, no, we were dick hugging. <laughs> when anybody get in your face and want to fight you, another man, y'all get too close, that's a perfect excuse to get out of a fight. Say, oh, no, yo, we dick hugging, no, no fight, no fight. <laughs> I was like, you know what? You want Fat Joe, bro, I'll give you Fat Joe. Now, my fellas don't dance when they pull up their pants and do the rock away, lean back. Lean back, lean back. How's that? He looked at me and says, you're not fat, Joe. <laughs> that was bad. We got rid of him. I told you it was gonna be a musical tonight. So uh, I'm finally made it to the village. That's a gay community, but I had some business to do there. Don't think any otherwise. And um, a gay gentleman walked up to me, and he said, uh, are you a gay bear? I said, no, I'm not a gay bear, bro. Don't ask me that. Leave me alone. He said, you're right. You're not a gay bear. You look like one of the seventh members of the village people, a gay viking. He said, do a, do a dance, do a song, so I can see if you're really one of the seventh members of the village people. I said, my man, I ain't going to do that. I ain't, get out of my face, he pulled out a gun. Why 
Ladies and gentlemen, love your kids. Okay? And thank you, Bill Maher.